Lady Anandi. The characters in Lady Anandi are as follows. Character 1. A male actor in his 60s. He plays Madhav Rao and Lady Anandi. Character 2. A female actor in her late 30s. She plays Lady F, the narrator. Character 3. Any capable female actor. She plays Indumati, the fan, Yashwant, the older brother, and Malati, the wife of Madhav Rao. Scene 1. The play begins with the image of the moon projected on the screen. It's dark. The song Chandrika Hi Zanu is playing in the background. Warm yellow light. There is a mirror with light bulbs on it, like found in a makeup room. Enter Anandi Bai. She is dressed in a blood red, nine yard silk sari covered in shimmering gold. She takes a stance close to the moon and starts speaking. Ah, Fandana kasa gore padla hai. Preme shashikala an avanila sukhada sudha pajita bala. Mrudu mrudu gala chumbuni bhala ramavi yanki. Udita hota dhavala sudhaushu lakha lakha tej khulata hai jagata khulata. Pad hai kai? Sushticha Anandat Virjan Ghalna Karita Ha Nich Rahu Chandrala Grasun Takto Hai Ha Paha Andhar Padat Chala Kaiga Baitari Itka Vair Pauli Mecha Chandrala Kasa Lakha Padla Hata Ani Itka Tha Amavasya Cha Kala Kutta Andhar Pauli Ma Ani Amavasya Ya Bhaini Bhaini Aaj Ek Meki Na Kad Kad Hoon Bheta Thay का दोगिंचा तंता विको पाला जाओन एक मेकिंचा जिंजा धोरून एक मेकिन ना उडिता है <laughs> काईस करत नहीं है बाल विश्वास हाँ चांदोबा पाहे रखा कसा कार्वंडर चालला है And lights come on and applause. The audience screams, Wah! 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 and throws roses on stage. Anandi Bai takes a bow. She takes the audience's love in and exits. <laughs> um, that's the beginning of my play. It's called Lady Anandi and it begins exactly like this except that I actually touch the moon and I don't have to use this. Uh, but the play does begin with me holding a script, uh, me reading out the stage directions and uh, Lady Anandi is the story of, I'll just come forward, I like to see my audience. Um, Lady Anandi is the story of my great grandfather, my Panzova. Uh, and I'll take you through how I came to making a performance. I don't call it a play because I've broken every single rule of theatre in this show. Um, I hold the script, which is very bad. Uh, I stop and break the fourth wall. So you'll always know that I am talking to you. Um, so I'll take you through the process of making Lady Anandi. I've just had a show yesterday, so I'm a bit exhausted in Bangalore, but I'll take you through what Lady Anandi. So this is the first opening of Lady Anandi. Thank you. 
I? I didn't make you a murderer. I merely changed the word from catch to kill. The sa ma ma mm, mm, M M stands for mother who is always busy cooking during Christmas time. That uh, was my first time on stage at the age of five. I played the alphabet M in the big word Christmas. I had first been cast in the lead as Virgin Mary of course. But I was quickly rejected because I couldn't sit still and I couldn't kneel down for a long time. But I was happy with the talking part rather than a silent, pious part. <laughs> that time one teacher said to me, Can you move your fingers like a lady? Like a lady, I thought. Oh yeah, like a lady. And there he was, standing, watching me. You know who? My great grandfather. My mother's father's father. I tried looking for him in family albums. He was missing. In history books, nothing. Online, aha, there he was in a footnote. He was missing from the archive. Years later, when I decided to be a full-time theatre actor at 34, a director once said to me, Don't stand like a man. Like a man, I thought. Another one says, mm, Baba, you read beautifully, but you don't physically fit the part. As an uh, actor of a certain age and a certain size, as I struggled to play women characters convincingly, you know how surprised I was when I first saw my great grandfather dressed in a blood red, nine yard silk sari covered in shimmering gold, dressed as Lady Anandi. Bend your knees more, chest out, arch your back, lower your shoulders. Believe you are a real woman. Believe I am a real woman. Can I be a convincing Anandi? Do I hold the pallu right? Is my waist the perfect size? Is my voice the right pitch? Is my gaze too stern? Hey, mister, am I woman enough for you? These are just parts of the play I'm acting out to explain the piece to you because the piece itself is quite complex. Uh, but in the piece, I break out and talk to the audience. So today it's gotten even more complex. You know, uh, really on nights like this, when the theater is empty and the lights are dim, it gets a bit cold and I smell old shoes and drying flowers and I hear poems about the moon and old men trying to cry themselves to sleep and I feel like he has been here on this stage by these walls. You know who? My great grandfather. <laughs> the other element I use in my performance is the projector and my shadow on the projector. Today the projector is hidden somewhere. This is a technologically very advanced space for me. Usually we have a very small projector and I'm standing in front. So uh, my shadow falls on this yellowing page. 
uh, and I enter the photograph, so to speak, uh, in this way. I try to catch the image on my body. I try to copy gestures uh, that he did in his plays. But I'm always failing to capture his beauty as a woman um, because I'm not that kind of woman. <laughs> Um, so the idea is to play with the idea of archival photographs because like I said I found nothing and then I found many many photographs and my idea was how will I ever live up to him playing women that look like this right because I look like this um, it's not a good or a bad thing um, and the idea then became of the archive what what is important about the archive what does the archive enable us to remember or what does it forget? So I began at a point where he was missing, and then I started finding few photographs, and then I realized that I'm standing here, his great-granddaughter. My body is an archive of our past. All our bodies carry stories of violence, of love, of lovemaking, uh, and that body becomes a part of the archive. So there's constantly a sort of endeavor to look at the ideal photographic archive. Uh, this might be a bit technical, but the ideal photographic archive and my archive as a body, and as a woman, actually. Where do I have to point? OK, let me go back. Oops, sorry. Where do I have to point to get this quick? Oh, sorry, it's going forward, really sorry. Okay, can you start it again, please? Yeah. I'm going to go forward just to show you what else I do quite slowly. I'm trying to avoid some of the provocative bits, but I'll try to keep some of them in as well. And a woman loves mustaches. No, I really do. Thick, black, long, hairy mustache. It feels so good. Auntie, you should try it sometime. Is there a resemblance? The strong forearms, the thinning hair, or the thick, black, long, hairy moustache. This photo is taken from the famous, or rather infamous play called Chitakwad, written by Krishnaji Prabhakar Khadelkar. This play was known as a seditious play of the Deccan. The British thought Kichak, played by my great-grandfather, represented Lord Curzon, the Viceroy of India. And Sairandri, they thought, was a metaphor for the people of India. And him raping her at the end, they thought, was a metaphor for the British exploiting the people of India. And thus, the play was banned on seditious grounds. Today, this play would be deemed anti-national. Really, very little has changed since 1909. Around the same time, another British officer, Jackson, was murdered by Kanhere outside Vidyananda Theatre in Nashik, while a Kirloskar company play Sangeet Sharda was going on. The British thought these plays were inciting violence and the murder of these officers. So the state was closely surveilling theatre companies, artists and thinkers. Again, very little has changed today. The atmosphere was charged. This is what I usually do. I dress up and I go closer to him. And then there's a scene of fiction that I play out between uh, the brother coming and telling my great-grandfather that the British officers are here and how he should not 
huge gestures of Kitak because they are not revolutionaries, they are just actors. Uh, so a whole fiction scene plays out here based on that story. Yeah? Shyamaja Krutyala Pashutunya Papa Saran Mana Rakshasi Krutya Mana Kiva Raja Virat Tuja Dora de Kazalela Tuja Apman Samad Hakti Chak Yadar Barat Raja Guru Purohit Ba Maharani Kya Sarvanche Dore Ubreastana Kya Sairan Ritsa Padal Tuja Angavarun Zabardasine Orun Kadun Acharatri his Sairandri खात्री ने माजी रंडी होना है तिचा अनुभवास आनुं देना है। This was the scene that they had a problem with, but this was a wildly popular play. But it also hastened the passing of the 1910 India Press Act. Charles Kincaid wrote four articles in the Times, describing the seditious climate in India. One focused on Kichakwad, calling it a seditious play of the Deccan. It is said that the British sent Brahmin undercover agents in the audience. <laughs> and these undercover agents reported back saying that the audience applauded the most seditious bits. <laughs> Be careful what you applaud. They ordered every single copy of the play to be burnt, and so it was. Except one. The publisher of the play, V. H. Damle, his sister in law, hid one copy in her sari and put that sari in her trunk and put that trunk under her bed. And that one copy helped to make several other copies when the ban was lifted in 1926. And of course, like all revolutions that women take part in, their name is not known. They're anonymous. So the name of Damle's sister-in-law I didn't find and she's anonymous. But this one copy helped to make several other copies when the ban was lifted in 1926. I'm performing a dual role today of my... Oh, there. Okay. You know, while these two brothers, Yashwant and Madhav, were fighting foreign oppression... <laughs> uh, ...were fighting foreign oppression, their younger brother, Surbanana Tipnis, was fighting deep-seated caste oppression. He was the head of the municipality in Mahad, and at the behest of B.R. Ambedkar, he opened up all water bodies to all castes. And this was the beginning of the Mahar Satyagraha and a 33-year long collaboration between Surbanana Tipnis and B. R. Ambedkar. And I put that here for this presentation saying that the personal is the political because I do believe that. Uh, this whole play or this performance came out because as a woman actor at 34, I did hear all kinds of things that I'm too old to be an actor, I'm too fat to be an actor, um, and as a female actor, I was always directed by men, and I was um, I was performing scripts that were usually written by men. Um, I was very uncomfortable with that, and I was thinking about this relationship between director, actor, playwright, um, which I think is very hegemonic, and I wanted to break that idea, and I wanted to write a text that was very close to my heart. So I started writing about my great grandfather. I started searching my great grandfather and he start, and I found that he was missing and I started thinking who are the people in history who go missing why do they go missing why does Damle's sister-in-law not find a name in Marathi theatre history when she preserved one of the most important plays in Marathi theatre um, and therefore this play is extremely political it's fun but it's very political today I feel calmer I'm in Bombay but in Bangalore yesterday I had a show and I was very angry um, in the performance. So I feel like the personal is the political. I'm breaking form of conventional theatre uh, where, I, where I pretend the audience doesn't exist and I'm like, oh my God, and one can do that, but one has broken away from that and I've come to a form called documentary theatre. Now documentary theatre, like documentary film, uses an element of reality. 
and here I could make up that he's my great grandfather, but the truth is he is actually my great grandfather. So it's coming from a place of documented reality, my own reality, and I'm using fiction to embellish that reality because archival evidence was missing. So where things go missing, I write fiction and I use the yellow slide and I pick up the paper and read. I read various uh, scenes that I wrote. So coming back to the narrative, uh, I was very fascinated by the collaboration between Surbanana Tipnis and B.R. Ambedkar. But I also wondered about another kind of collaboration. Madhav, my great grandfather, is wearing a topi and riding a bullock cart. There's a back projection. You know, like in the olden days when Devanand is driving a car and the car is stationary and the projection is moving? Like that. And he's with a young boy who's handing out pamphlets and making an announcement. In your village, only for two souls, come watch the best. Of our times, Sangeet Chandrabhan, Chandrabhan, Chandrabhan. Come watch it on the night of the lunar eclipse. Come watch the beautiful moon on it. Suddenly, a vivacious young lady is running after the bullock cart, trying to catch the pamphlet. Give me one, it flies off. Give me another, it flies off again. Mother, seeing her running, slows down the bullock cart. What's your name? What's yours? Madhav. <gasps> Malati, is that you on the poster? Are you the hero? <laughs> no, I am the heroine. I am Mohana. Will you come watch me? Uh, only if my parents let me. Tell them, Madhav Rao, the Natak Mandali has invited you. <gasps> Is the play about ghosts and shamans? <laughs> no, it's a historical play. Then I won't come. I don't like history. Is it a musical at least? <laughs> no, it's a prose play. Then I won't come. Bye. That's how my great grandfather and great grandmother fell in love. She was 14. He was 32. What's your name? What's yours? Mother. Malati. Is that you on the poster? Are you the hero? <laughs> I'm the heroine. I'm Mona. Will you come watch me? Only if my parents let me. Tell them. Mother Rao, the Natak Mandari has invited you. Is the play about ghosts and shamans? No, it's a historical play. Then I won't come. I don't like history. Is it a musical at least? No, it's a prose play. Then I won't come. Bye. Finding anything on my great grandfather was very difficult. Then I found one interview with him in a Diwali Yanka of Natya Darapan magazine. Uh, Diwali Yanka, you know, is a special issue for Diwali. And this magazine I found in a library in Pune. And serendipitously, this library is above an old theater. And in that, he talks about what it was for him to play a woman. He was made to walk on a chalk line. but with lead anklets so that his walk would be more delicate and ladylike. But he couldn't control his tears when he was made to wear a padded blouse so that he had firm breasts.
one of his favorite roles was Daria Bai or Lady Macbeth. I really like the sound of that word, Daria Bai, the woman of the ocean or the lady from the sea. It is said in the interview that he played Lady Macbeth with such severity that he felt violently ill. And his older brother and the doctor asked him to tone down his emotion. And so he did. And his Darya Bai was never quite the same. Madhav is sleeping with a wet cloth on his head. He has high fever. He is sleep talking. Yashwant is sitting beside him looking worried with a palm on Madhav's forehead. We can hear Madhav mumbling lines from Lady Macbeth, the candle theme. Madhav, yet here's a spot. Out, damn spot. Out, I say. One, two, tis time to do it. Hell is murky. Rope bada, tu ghari hai. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and a feared. What need we fear, who knows it, when none can call up our to account? Sleep, mother, I'm right beside you. The pain of fife had a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? Shh! Such intensity at your age. Zop! No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You mar all with this starting. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Look not so pale. Mother, get out of character. I tell you yet again. Banco was buried. He cannot come out on one's grave. To bed, to bed, to bed, to bed. That's knocking at the gate. Come, 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 give me your hand. What's done cannot be undone. To bed, to bed, to bed. You will be better tomorrow. You will get better. Please get better. And blackout. One of the last few scenes in the play, you know, I didn't talk about in the beginning, I explored the idea of the fan. Did these female impersonators have fans? Who were these fans? Did they write them letters? And I found a great story uh, by a Gujarati female impersonator called Jai Shankar Sundari. And he had a crazy woman who sent him all kinds of presents and wrote him letters. And I'm very fascinated by letters. So I thought of an idea of my great-grandfather having a fan, Indumati, and she's married, and what happens to her, and her admiration for his character of Lady Anandi. That's a scene I didn't show you, but I'll read out the last part of the show. <coughs> Indumati. Dear Anandi Bai, I'm sorry if I offended you the other night. That was not my intention. I only wanted to show you my admiration. I cannot forget how radiant you looked that night. I was shocked to know that your hair isn't real. I always thought when you wear your hair down, it might be like my mother's. Thick, black, long. <laughs> I cannot write very much. But since you said write to me, I'm attempting it. No one can know I'm writing to you. I hope this reaches you and you will reply. Your admirer, Indumati. Dear Indumati, I was surprised and happy to receive your letter. It's because of people like you that I get up there on stage every evening. Otherwise, after 30 years of doing it every day, I am now weary and tired. I'm sorry if I disappointed you. When I was younger, I did have long black hair and flawless skin, much like yours. 
You are so beautiful. I wish to see you again, soon. Waiting for your response eagerly, Madhav. Dear Indumati, you have not replied to my letter. Did I offend you in any way? That was not my intention. I only wanted to thank you for your letter, that's all. The strangest thing happened to me. I received incense sticks from an ardent admirer. Was it you? Forever yours, Madhav. Dear Anandi Bai, it is most odd that someone should send you such a beautiful present and not claim it. I wonder why. Maybe she wants to remain unknown. First tell me, did you like the smell of the incense sticks? In admiration, Indu. And the play ends after this and I'll just change the presentation quickly to show you how it ends. It's 10 seconds. Hi, can I just change something there? Yeah. Give me a shift. I can go to look. And can you see the yeah. oh, no, no. And can I see the sun? Will it come? Just the play record itself. Please. And usually I'm intercepting the projector, so yeah, you can play play record it slideshow. Madhav now is a very old man. He's standing on stage in nothing but his underwear. He has a delusional, look senile look about him. Stop looking at me. I don't want to stand here anymore. This place smells rotten. Like a thousand dead were living here. I want to retreat into that black hole. There, never to return. I have to go. Let me go. Another will come much brighter. I must leave to make place for another. Be patient. Wait. Another will come. And end of slideshow. You can just shut the lid. Escape, yeah. That was in very short. I've tried to perform. I've tried to explain. Um, we'll just open it up to questions. And at the end of the show, I actually have a very long Q&A with the audience. So this is actually perfect. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. This wasn't meant to be a performance, but uh, I was like, I might as well perform since I'm here. So I'm not dressed in, I'm wearing more respectable clothing in my show. Um, yeah, any questions? I can talk a bit more about making this show. Uh, just quickly, this place started, I, I traveled across India. Um, I took this show as a work in progress because nobody was willing to direct my sh piece and it was a new form that I was working with. So my audiences actually have directed my piece. Um, I had a long Q&A and they would tell me what was working, what was not working. Um, so I feel like the audience really empowered some of my choices. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, you referenced an article, um, uh -huh. like an interview that you did with yeah. the magazine. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, like what kind of insight um, you um, got from So that? that's yeah. the only interview I found with of him. So a first person account, that's the only account I have uh, of him talking about his practice as a female impersonator. 
so he talks it i think it was in a uh, in a article which was commemorating 100 years or something and he talks about playing a woman on stage he talks about how and i didn't i omitted one scene where he talks about how actors at that time weren't allowed to keep anything for themselves so if a fan or patron gave them anything it became a part of the company um that was such a grave sense of who you work with and he worked with his older brother and again because i've skipped over lots of things the older brother in my mind is the antagonist because he forced him to be an actor um so the article talks about all of that and the discipline actors had at the time even if they were ill they had to go and be in rehearsal uh, and they didn't have the word director they used to call them talim master which is the rehearsal master which i really liked the idea and that they blocked um, the stage with chalk markings so character x will stand here you will walk from here to here so i tried to use that that the older brother says walk walk on the line uh, uh, so it's those kind of things in that article are you are you doing any more shows that you can come and catch the whole, the full thing <laughs> well i'm lucky my next two shows are in berlin and stockholm uh, i leave tomorrow night actually um and no but the next show in bombay uh, is possibly on 16th of march at iit bavai um and 8th of march in delhi but it's not a show it's a little bit like this only yeah hi hi uh, i really like your performance the way you did and it's something very unique style like uh, the unique way that we get to see over here uh i have a small question yes. uh, what inspired you to do this that's a great question um I, like i was saying um i i i came to become a full time theater actor at 34 it's quite old uh, according to some people uh, i've done other jobs i've taught kunal i've taught cinema i've done all kinds of crazy things um So at 34 I decided to be a full time actor and a lot of people gave me very negative reactions and responses and I used to find them funny. I said like, why are you saying you can't be an actor you're too old and all kinds of really r- random things. And at the same time I was reading uh, Virginia Woolf's text called The Room of One's Own. And in 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 Room of One's Own she says if Shakespeare had a sister would she be allowed to write plays or would she have killed herself or would she be married off? and i was thinking about my situation in the theater that um, you know i worked with some pretty well known directors in bombay and i felt like it's still the same uh, my relationship like i was saying with my director or with my playwright was very uh, low and i thought i was much more capable than that and i was unhappy with the way we were making work like my director was telling me walk and i have been told that i'm not woman enough i mean i've been told that in many ways so all those things were uh, I was I thought it was funny I thought it was ridiculous that at today's times we are told that so I thought it would be so nice to ex- excavate the story of my great grandfather because I knew he was a female impersonator and when I looked at his photographs I was like he's a beautiful woman but when men played women it's the hyper idea of the hyper feminine with all like this you know it's it's a bit much and I thought I'm never going to be that woman I don't want to be that kind of woman so it's this idea of this is the kind of woman I am so it was from all of these questions about my body my gender the way i was making art uh, that i accessed the story of my great grandfather so that means the uh, the performance that you had today yeah. uh, the same performance or you uh, do other things also like on the stage like about other topics <laughs> i've stopped doing other kinds of plays uh, now i don't do work with others i create my own work as a as a female artist i believe now i need to create my own work so this is my work i do a thing called reading room where i invite people to bring letters um then i've recently done a, a performance at kaban park metro station in bangalore so now i make work i produce my own work i think more women need to do that yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much Hi Anand uh, you said no things have not changed for women like this we are talking about theaters i mean it could be in other workshops like also i mean from 
your old grandfather days to now. But uh, some of the sectors, maybe if you see, like say, there is a banking what I come across. Like if you see top four, five banks, their top CMD or CEO, they are women. Mm. How do you think it could evolve over a period of time to other sectors, other walks of life where women are maybe given equal opportunity or equal They don't have to give it. Nobody has to be given yeah. anything. We just have to take it. I mean, it doesn't, it's yeah. not meant to be this, <laughs> anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know about banking and all. I'm very far away from banking. I'm a, I'm an artist, you know. I know what I'm supposed to do in my field, and I'm trying that. Um, I feel more women need to produce, write, um, yeah, be in more positions of leadership, but with the awareness that with leadership, you could also assume roles of patriarchy, you see. I'm not saying women are less exploitative of other women. So that's also something we have to be mindful of. So you are saying it's the women who have to take that uh, courage and strength and go and uh, grab the opportunities which are there. Or make it, make, make it, it for make themselves. The and I also am very aware that I come from a very privileged position, right? Like I'm a very, priv I'm a privileged woman. Um, I'm so I'm aware of those privileges, but well, yeah. I don't know how other, other sectors might do it. I, I really, I don't have a Miss India answer to that. Thank you, thank you. Thank All you. women thank you. should be educated and then they should know. I don't know, man. We've got to work it out for ourselves. Sorry, I mean, I don't... Uh, yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. I was just uh, seeing your performance or your communication. Now, certain questions come to my mind. Like, yeah. uh, you're talking about your grandfather, the man in the red sari. Yeah. And also, you're talking about personal is political. Yes. Um, very confusing, but uh, a man uh, enacting a female's uh, character on the stage. Huh. Uh, do you do you try to or did you try to delve into the mind of the man? How what sort of uh, metamorphosis he goes through? Yeah. And uh, and how does it affect him on the personal life? Yeah. Outside the stage. He had uh, seven children. If you're asking me, how it affected his outside life? He had seven children. Number one. Um, no, but it was difficult for him. He wanted to be a wrestler. His dream and passion, and in that interview he says he wanted to be a wrestler. He used to have five liters of milk when he was growing up. So, so, so uh, while that maybe, uh, I mean, outwardly speaking, he was going to be a wrestler. His uh, yeah. other, 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 maybe uh, one thing uh, to be a wrestler, a manly, masculine True. kind of thing. True. But does it make it uh, make him more sensitive to? Uh, does uh, men? Uh, being woman, yeah. uh, bring out uh, the real human out of him. Does it do that? I mean, do you, do you in your theatrical uh, life see that uh, females uh, act in acting a male soul that doesn't happen much, but me men uh, doing female soul that, that does happen. Mm. And do, do 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 that change the man? I I don't know, um, but they did they they did used to say that he was a he was a good person, okay. he was a gentle person. But I uh, see I don't know him. I've imagined what he was like, and that is my artistic journey, imagining his life, right? So I don't know him at all. I don't know him as a person. These are all assumptions, and this is where I build fiction. So, so you are building the fiction. Can yeah. you, uh, will you try to, as you said, you wanted to probably a suggestion in your, in your performance. Yeah. That will you try to bring the mind of the man also here, in yeah. the in the in the whole process of his, uh, he spent a long lifetime on. A, on yeah. And you could get his matter through the. Co I mean, if I did the whole show, you do get his uh, side of the story. You do get it. You see what Madhav was thinking of. But today I just did a quick presentation. But through the show, you do see what he was thinking about. And and just to qu I mean just to tell you why I titled this piece "My Little History," because um, um, I mean I was saying earlier that we are living in very dangerous or difficult times where there's a constant effort to create a grand national narrative, grand historical narrative. And in that, if we have smaller personal little histories written by women, queer people, children, if we have smaller histories that are challenging the large historical narrative, then we have a fight. Um, and that's why I titled this My Little History, because all of us need to delve into our own personal stories. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. 
time ago. Hi, hi. Uh, Anuja, can you just tell us about what you did at uh, the Kabul Park uh, metro station with uh, the students of Shishti School of uh, yeah. Design? Yeah. Um, so at Kabul Park metro station, um, so like any metro station, uh, people are running to catch the train, people are in a hurry, people are in their own world. So I worked with the students of Shishti where um, we had 20 students at 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning and 5.30 to 6 in the evening. In the morning, they were at the landing, which is very crowded, intersecting the commuters. And in the evening, they were at the platform. So we had 20 bodies moving extremely slowly in space and time and waving to the commuters. And every time the train came, all 20 moved. And they were different parts. So the commuters would be like, who are these people? Why are they, why are they not moving? Or why are they moving so slowly? And since they're students of design, they design chits. So if he'd come, he'd be like looking at me and I'll give him a chit that says, I hope you find a seat on the metro. So these were illustrated chits that he passed. And it became so nice. We did it over 10 days. And um, at some point, people from the trains would wave back. And to thank them, someone would start walking slowly. And this was a Bhutto walk, which is very slow. So your actions are very, very slow. And each of them had their mobile phones and the music was playing very loudly. It was like, and these kids are moving very slowly. So we just wanted the commuters to stop, look, smile, slow their pace down. And one lady got a note that says, you are the only thing that matters today. And then she came and said, I needed to hear it. I needed to hear it. So I was working with time, and I was working with counter movement um, in the public space. Uh, and it was received really well, actually. Thank you.